CBN has debunked a press release shared on the Instagram page of the First Lady Aisha Bwari. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the Central Bank of Nigeria has debunked a press release shared on the Instagram page of the First Lady Aisha Bwari. In the release shared on Aisha's page on Tuesday, it was alleged that the old 500 Naira 1000 Naira notes should remain legal tender for the next 70 days. It has been observed that the First Lady deleted the post from her Instagram page. The CBN also said it is working with intelligence and security agencies to arrest and prosecute for various of the fake news. At number two, the Federal High Court has requested that its judges take a little vacation for them to take part in the upcoming general election. In a circular signed by John Soho, Chief Judge, it stated that the break will last from February 22nd to February 28th. Soho instructed divisional heads in Abuja, Lagos and Port Harcourt to make sure that a judge is appointed to handle the legal requirements of the North, South West, South South, South East geopolitical zones. At number three, Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission Professor Mamu Yakubu says a total of 146,913 domestic and international observers will be deployed for the 2023 general election. He revealed this at the INAC briefing for observers of the 2023 general election in Abuja on Tuesday. According to the INEC chairman, the number of observers is the largest in the history of the country. The commission accredited 196 national and domestic organizations that deployed 144,800 observers and 33 international organizations that deployed 2,113 observers. At number four, the Kogi State Police Command has confirmed an explosion that rocked the administrative office of Okehi, local government area of the state. Also confirming the explosion, the State Security Advisor Commander Jerry Omodara said that the incident had been traced to saboteurs who wanted to cause panic during the election to prevent people from coming out to vote. It was gathered that the unknown gunmen had stormed the Secretariat around 5 p.m. on Monday and planted the explosion that ripped through the administrative block of the Secretariat. At number five, a federal high court in Abuja on Tuesday dismissed a suit seeking the removal of Al Kali Baba Usman, the Inspector General of Police. The suit instituted against President Muhammadu Bari and four others by an Abuja activist, Michael Sam Idoko, was dismissed by Justice John Omotoso. In his judgment, Justice Omotoso invoked Section 7, Subsection 6 of the Police Act 2020, which put the tenure of the office of any Inspector General of Police at four years. The judge held that the plaintiff failed to establish having any peculiar or special interest over and above other Nigerians. At number six, the Court of Appeal on Tuesday affirmed the governorship candidates of the All Progressives Congress in the June 18, 2022 gubernatorial election, Biodin Oyebaji as the governor of Ekiti State. The governorship candidates of the Social Democratic Party, Shegun Oni, had challenged the victory of Oyebaji in the election. The Independence National Electoral Commission declared Oyebaji a winner for claiming the highest vote in the governorship election. A three-member panel while delivering judgment on Tuesday held that the appeal filed by Oni lacks merit. At number seven, a media aide to the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Timi Silva Horaitus Egwa, has apologized to Nigerians and industry operators for a media publication error. Egwa had on Monday, February 20th, 2023, released a statement titled Theft, Pipeline Vandalism Responsible for Volumes of Crude Oil Losses that was credited to the Minister to the Media for publication. He noted that the statement was a working draft which should not have been released to the media for publication as it did not get the clearance of the minister. Egwa said the statement was not in any way released to denigrate the reputation of the head of any agency or government official or dispute the figures released by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. At number 8, the Independence National Electoral Commission in Bauchi has signed a memorandum of understanding with transport unions to facilitate the smooth movement of personnel and materials in the upcoming general election. The parties to the agreement are the Nigeria Union of Road Transport Workers and the National Association of Road Transport Owners. INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in the state, Mohamed Noura, stated this on Tuesday. He said the agreement was initially sealed at the national level and replicated at the state and local government levels. At number nine, according to a report, gunmen on Tuesday burned the country home of the Imo State Commissioner for Youth and Sports, Emeka Okorunko. The incident happened at the Okigwe local government area of the state. 
the country homes of a former dean of the law faculty of the Imo State University Oweri, Namdi Obiariri, who served as Commissioner for Information, Youth and Sport and Land and Urban Planning, and a retired director of Department of State Services, Emeka Ngu, were also burned. An old woman who was in Ungu's house was caught up in the fire and died. The spokesperson for the police in the state, Henry Okoye, confirmed the attack saying investigation had begun with a view to arresting the fleeing suspects. Finally, at number 10, the federal government has repatriated no fewer than 150 stranded Nigerians from Neyme, Niger Republic. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajiya Sadia Uma Farouk, represented by the Director of Humanitarian Services of the Ministry, Alaji Gemma Ali, stated this while receiving the returnees at the Amino Kanu International Airport. She said the exercise was conducted in collaboration with the International Organization for Migration and the Economic Community of West African Countries. According to what the returnees were brought back to Kanu under the care of IOM and ECOWAS from Niger Republic. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.